Okay, here is a case study of using our knowledge of uncertainties to interpret graphical data. Let's say we've done an experiment and we've come up with something that looks like this. Um, to be more concrete, let's imagine that we were looking at the heat treatment of a uh, metal. And this axis along here might tell us how much heat treatment was done, and this axis might tell us the strength of the resultant wire. What we want to learn is you know, how are the two related? Uh, does increasing the heat treatment make things stronger? Does it make it uniformly stronger? What's going on here? Well, what did the data show us? I guess most of the points up here are quiet time, most of the points are down there are quite low, so that's telling us there's some sort of trend. But let's go through a bunch of hypotheses and see how they fit the data. The simplest hypothesis will be that the strength of the wire does not depend on the heat treatment. In that case, we'd be looking at a value of something like, I don't know, what's an average, something like that. And so our first hypothesis might be that the strength is always a value of 3.3 you know, regardless. Is that consistent with the data? Well, these error bars are standard uncertainties. So standard uncertainty, so you'd expect about you know, two-thirds two of the points to lie within it. In this case, this line lies within one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of the 17 data points. So that's rather few. It's telling us this is not a good fit to the data. So let's try something else. It kind of looks like there's two different things. It's very low, then suddenly jumps up over here. I wonder if that's a good theory. So let's try a model or something like that. So our model might look like... Is this a good fit to the data? Well, this goes through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of the data points, 15 out of the 17. That's actually too good. Um, you'd expect maybe 10 or 11 out of 17 to lie within one standard deviation. The fact that this model is fitting through all of them probably tells us that we're overfitting the data, that we're actually fitting noise rather than data. An extreme example would be something like, mm, I don't know, let's say we had a curve like this. I mean, that looks like a really good fit. It goes through the middle of every data point. In fact, it's far too good. In this case, for example, um, all the bumps and wiggles, the bump here, the bump down there, are almost certainly just reflecting the noise. They're nothing real. Um, this is far too good a fit. We're fitting the noise more than the data. And the same applies to the green line. It goes through too many of the points. So that's suspicious. It's telling us like we're fitting noise. Is there something in between the pale blue line and the green line? Something, the green line, um, blue line is clearly a bad fit, the green line is too good. Well, we could try something like, oh, I don't know, um, maybe a straight line at a slope. So if you had something like, how does that do? It goes through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of the data points, which is about right. You can also look at the residuals. There's... Um, about the same number above and below. Um, so that's probably a fairly good fit. So we're looking, in this case, most likely the correct fit is something like this line. It's not fitting the noise like the green one. It's not a bad fit like the blue one. It's fitting about 66% of the data points with roughly even numbers above and below. And so that would be my best guess of what's going on here. There is a linear trend between the amount of heat treatment and the strength of the wires. And in fact, in this case, I know that's correct because I faked the data myself and that's the model I put in. So all the variations, the parent step is just biases in the noise.